Hi, Rick Hirsch. Uh, book two. Uh, I'm the author of uh, this book, which I was just talking about in the first take when uh, uh, the camera or the video uh, camera stopped giving me the message. It's been idle for some time. Well, what, what, what's it supposed to be doing? Push-ups? I mean, I, I'm, I'm filming, for God's sake. Um, and for the God's sake, there are 33 some thousand in, in uh, India. The reason I have this out is because I'm going to talk about vocabulary a little bit today. And uh, uh, that's because uh, I'm, I'm nearing the end of Abended Circuity, which I've been reading uh, um, sporadically because I'm reading so many things at once. Um, but my press put this out, Corona Samizdat put this out. It's been doing quite well, but it may be doing better if it didn't have this intimidating cover. Or maybe the intimidating cover is what makes people buy it. I don't know. But um, the, the reputation it's getting is uh, pretty astonishing. It's an extraordinary book. The writing is extraordinary. And I just lost my place. I'm going to talk about just one paragraph, actually. But the reason I was talking about um, vocabulary is because this guy um, is extensive, or he uses an extensive one. It, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with using words you don't know. Um, I like to do that uh, for the fun of it while I'm writing. If a word comes into my uh, vocabulary uh, or into my uh, vision, across the horizon came fictile and fingent. <clears throat> I have a chapter in uh, my most well-known book, The Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas, called The Fictile and the Fingent. Great words. So I used them. And uh, uh, so we don't really care uh, about what, what uh, Robert Stickley talks like in his everyday uh, affairs. But um, somebody does. Uh, uh, I'll tell you why. A little anecdote from the days of the Iowa Writers Workshop. Um, that's why I had this book out because this is why I went there and I don't want you to dislike me for having gone there because uh, I went there to write this. I wrote this and I wrote the first of the Driftless trilogy because I had spare time and uh, so you know I got something out of it and uh, I also ran into some crazy shit like the first time I, I um, handed in part of that novel uh, two little shits they were little and they were shits um, male and female, and they got together. They became a couple. Frank and Hot Lips, I called them. Um, separately, I called them different things. Um, he was the bloat-headed homunculus with insect arms. You know, he's always going like this and going, <laughs> you know, and, and she would go like this. Trying to get people to lean closer. And, uh, you know, I in one workshop, I said, all right, either you're with me or against me. I say... And when she talks, we don't move our heads. So if she wants to talk and not be heard, we'll just, you know, let her, we'll watch her when her lips stop moving. But if she wants to be heard, let her speak up so that we can hear. We're in a small seminar room. It's not hard. You could talk about this um, uh, loud and, and people would hear you. You know, it's not that hard, but she would talk like this and, and you know, that's what it's like. With the internet, the revolution. And anyway, both of them thought that I used big words, two bigger words. And I got the reputation for using big words. And uh, it was funny when I, uh, before uh, printing this book, um, I went through it looking for big words and small ones. You know, I edited it or proofread it. And uh, I was amazed. There were there weren't many big words, as we call even little words like disco, if we don't know what they mean. Disco. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. Maybe he made it up. So I got known for that, and one day uh, one of the hot shots at the uh, um, 
workshop uh, received me. Uh, uh, me and a friend walked down to his place, and um, and he <laughs> we we're just sitting out having a beer uh, uh, in his backyard, and he comes out with a dictionary, <laughs> a dictionary, and and he looks in the dictionary, and he picked a word, and he said, "You know what that means?" I thought, "Wow, well, this is fucking weird." Uh, yeah, I know what that means. And I told him what it meant. He said, oh. Then he looked at another word. And he said, you know what this means? He said, yeah. Yeah, I know what that means. And, you know, I thought, God, let there be one quick that I don't know so we can stop. And the third one, I didn't know. And he, with some satisfaction, you know, a little bit, a little bit uh, downplayed, with some satisfaction, he closed the dictionary and took it back into the house. But you know, <laughs> this, this, you know, what what else could it be but that reputation? And these people would just say things like the most condescending shit. You know, they were ten years younger than me, and they were dumb. Uh, um, and 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 they were um, talking about how people outgrow. John Gardner taught her that, I think. I don't know. I don't know if John Gardner really even meant to say that. I don't know John Gardner. never met him. I think he's dead. I think our chances are, are limited. But um, he, he uh, I think, was responsible for her, her um, dislike of words she didn't know or something like that. Anyway, uh, if you don't want to learn new words, don't worry about it. Don't look these up. I'm not going to. I mean, I have sometimes. But uh, I'm going to read just one paragraph. It's, it's from, uh, th this is peppered with the occasional sermon. And um, I'm not going to tell you much about them, except that they can be very funny. And so let me read in a southern accent, because it takes place in the south of the United States. As I were bended over in prayer, as he talked me through a supplicant's palsy, I swear to you, a blind aura of gold overtook me from behind my eyes. I raised up my head whilst I fought through my final words, Lord, come over me. And as I did so, heaven's golden portal cracked open before me in tourbillions. First one. And lavishes and flittering sparges. I shook myself from supplication, and here, in this very nave of the agape trinity and the white throne, he presented himself me, reprised in the flesh of our flesh, blood of our blood, coming yet again in the air of the world. There he stood, our white warrior, draped in Tyrian robes, fringed all about in oscillated lengths of the ounce. Over that frippery was a knight's tabard, rainbowed upon the chest with a bejeweled coat of arms. His skin a paler shade of purest platinum, his mane a rippling coiffure, the filaments of starbursts at every moment forging the most precious of ores. And there was an elemental radiance besparkling from his chryselephantine gaze. He was bedecked too, in a bandolier of Gideon's Bible's cloisonne by craft and inset with both pearl and jewel in his dextral hand, he clutched an enamel stave set with a broad discal standard atop, white gold rimmed in gold. This stave he held out before him with a straight and steady arm, spilling in from behind this messianic tableau were diamantiferous oblations, doubtless unwitherable and shining for all of his etern. The whole of this being overset in a motif of infinite lacework flowing backwards into the heavens. So awestruck was I that I sputtered in my excitement, experienced intense and pleasurable pangs deep inside my fundaments at the advent of Jesus' dramatic coming. 
In this moment, I trembled before him, mustering up the courage to say, White gold Jesus, wherefore have thou come? I love that paragraph. And there are seven words I don't know. Uh, now, let us go over these seven words. Tour billions. <laughs> billions. Tour billions. Um, I don't know. Uh, is it a number? I don't know. Flittering sparges. I will look up sparges because it's a great word. You sparge. I was just, I felt like I was covered with sparges. You know, they're, they're, so it's just an, a, a great word, whatever it means. Uh, tabard, well, uh, scabbard, tabard, you know, a knight's tabard, you know, simple word, just never looked it up. Probably never saw it, actually. But um, Chris Elephantine, ah, neologism, maybe, maybe, don't know. Dextral, I underline it because, you know, you don't see it much. Sinistral, dextral, you know, right, left, right, dextral. That might be left on there, I don't know. Uh, not left on there, I will take it off. But, uh, oh, for the, I skipped the French one. Cloisonne by Kraft and Inset. Okay. Uh, Diamantiferous. Diamantiferous. Diamondish. Diamond like. Uh, uh, I don't know. Probably. Something like that. Uh, it's enriching. <laughs> Even just seeing the words is enriching to me. Um. Uh, and uh, I, I have looked up a few, like, you know, I will look up Sparge, as I said. Um, but anyway, that, that's just, uh, uh, the, I've, I've spoken about this book a few times, and as I still haven't finished, uh, I'm getting there, though, getting there. Um, it's a great book, very funny, but it, it, it's not an easy book to go through because it's dense, it's very dense, but when you take the time to read it carefully, slowly, sometimes quicker than others when people are talking, sometimes it's even slower, because the way they talk is the way he writes. It's a, it, it's, it, and at times, even that is funny, because you have these editorial writers writing in these grandiose, uh, highfalutin ways. Um, they, none of these people would say highfalutin. Although I think I've read that in here. Somebody must have said it. Maybe I said it. Highfalutin. Every time I get excited, I go, highfalutin. And I get excited a lot. There's some really funny uh, things going on in here. And um, if you don't believe me, uh, check Goodreads. I think there's some pretty good reviews on there. Probably all five-star reviews. Anyway, that's my story uh, for today. And uh, I hope you appreciate it. And, oh, I left out one thing. So I'm in this class, uh, my first class at the workshop, my first workshop. I was 34. I'd been driving a taxi. And uh, somebody said, go to the writer's workshop in Iowa. And um, I chose Iowa because they gave me a good financial aid package that meant uh, uh, I, I could write essentially for free. I had to teach three classes a year. And it was easy stuff. So uh, that's why I went there. But it was my first workshop, and I found it a bizarre uh, uh, ritual. Anyway, we, we, but I won't go into it much, except to say that Marilyn Robinson was my first teacher. And I handed in my, uh, um, what at the time was the beginning of this novel, and uh, there's some hallucinatory writing in there. And she made a, a, a point of criticizing uh, that in a, a very intelligent, uh, reasonable way, saying that even when you're hallucinatory and hallucinating, you are the writer, you still have to pay attention to what you're saying. Because I, I used a, a collocation that 
actually didn't make sense, incrementally decreasing. And since the root of increment is increase, it doesn't go with decrease. And uh, I thought, oh, shit, yeah, that's right. So what did I learn from that? No matter how good you think it is, just just check it one more time. And um, the, the, the little, little dumb people were happy. But then the next time I went up, it was another long passage from the book, and uh, um, and and she was really happy with it, Marilyn Robinson. Um, I think a lot of times the teachers just they look for something in a piece, and then you know if they find something bad to uh, in it that that they can use to teach, they do. If they can find something good that they can use to teach, they do. Well, this one, uh, she said. Um, she was reading passages and saying, that's positively Melvillian. One of my wonderful moments in life. Marilyn Robinson called part of my writing positively Melvillian. But what she was doing was saying to the people in class, there's a lot of words. She actually said this. There's a lot of words in the English language. You should use them. So, uh, you know, that, that was probably largely uh, uh, why she went on a positive binge uh, for that one. But yeah, there's a lot of words in the language. And uh, you shouldn't be afraid to use them. I mean, have some sparge. Pull out your tabard. <laughs>